Alrighty, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to a new segment of John M H D Z two one five eight. Yes, I'm just bringing out uh, segments all over the place. I got my new John's toy box, my new mail unboxing. Now this one is going to be called John's exhibit and explanation. So you could guess you could call it John's double E for short. But yeah, guys, so today I'm going to explain my awesome contest winner. He won second place in the 113 War um, San Japan 2017 Gunpla Contest. And yeah, I'm just going to go over how I did it. This is the 1144 High Grade Megillah Travel Grease. And how I wetted it, how I used plug plate to detail it up, how I did a little bit of modifications here and there, how I did. Um, uh, decal stickers, this is all decal stickers. How I painted, detail painted I guess you could say. Yeah, and how I use pigments for the very first time. Yes, I love pigments after using this. By the way, I guess a cool way to start this video off is starting off with one fact. It took me on a Saturday from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. to finally finish the weathering. Yes, I did it all in one day, technically, and oh my god, it was hard work, I was dying from San Japan, but yeah guys, it worked really, really well. It wasn't Saturday night, it was actually Friday night, excuse me, because that wouldn't make sense, because that would have been past the uh, tournament, the contest, excuse me. But yeah guys, so, you got a good look at them, I'll just give y'all one more rotation, since this is in the back. Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of decals, pigments, fluff plates bunch of enamel painting, bunch of uh, a little bit of acry acrylic painting here, there you use some uh, hand paint. Alright guys, I'm gonna stop them right here. Okay, so I got my trusty bamboo skewer, or just a uh, meat skewer here and there, just to give you detailed looks and stuff, seeing my fat fingers, uh, they're not fat honestly, they're just too big for them all. <laughs> stop making fun of me guys, stop making fun of my myself, self, anyways. Alright. Let's go over the plug plates, I guess. Alright guys, so this is my first time experimenting with plug plating. And, um, you know what, scratch that. We're not going to go over a plug plate first. We're going to go over the painting process. So all of this was hand painted, except the top coat. I used an airbrush, and I also used acrylic flat coat to top this off. So let's start by discussing the orange right here. You see the orange in the little, um, I want to say generator, energy generator right there. I especially you see in the back too. How I colored that. I used, I used fluorescent orange enamel by testers. And then after it was done drying properly, enamels take up to 24 hours. Just FYI. Actually, what I did was after the 24 hour dry period, I gave it a hand painted top coat using Tamiya Clear. So maybe that's why it's popping out a little more. I put like many, many coats of that and then I topped it off with black coat. So it may have, I may have made an accidental effect if that makes any sense. So yeah, I painted it with fluorescent orange enamel, top coated it with clear. Then what I did next was I used. Testers enamel signal amber, which gives you a metallic amber yellow kind of like a dark gold Between like a yellow and an orange if that makes any sense It's kind of like a very very light orange, but it has just that metallic particles in it And yeah after that the whole time I once again was topped off a of flat coat. So that's how I painted that And if you want me to repeat it or if you have any questions about how I got that color you can also see on the head as well You can see it. Uh, actually, one detail I didn't review in the contest was I painted his little um, camera. So, uh, let me see if I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it off. Okay. So, just like so. This I didn't top coat. I think I forgot to. <laughs> because I wasn't going to display it like this. So, guys, judges, uh, Dustin and Thomas, if you are there, this is what I did on the inside. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to show this off because I didn't like the bronze color that I did. After I was done experimenting, which I'll later discuss, the gold on in between his arms right there and right there. Yeah, I didn't really, I hated this bronze color and I was like, dang it, why did I painted this bronze? The gold would have made it so much better. So, I don't know. I may go back and paint it gold. We'll see. But yeah, I definitely painted this, hand painted. Um, I guess I, I use a reverse wash technique to paint this thing right here, the little camera, the inner core. The inner camera of the gray's head 
And yeah, just the same technique, fluorescent orange, top coated, signal amber, and top coated. So yeah, that's how I did that. And of course, as you can see too, when the head is closed, there's orange right there and orange at the bottom. I'm gonna just go ahead and close this up right here. Make sure it's nice and closed. I don't want to mess with the pose too much because I do love where it's at right now. Just give me a sec to fix it up. Okay, so with that being said, let's go over the gold since I mentioned it. So what I like to do with a bunch of the grazes depending I like to imagine that Grazus, Megillus, he's basically a commander, or I'm not really too sure, he's just a military guy with high rank. I'm gonna give him the gold details representing his status in the uh, military, in the Galahorn military. So gold, to me, I imagine is a high ranking, high ranking color, so that's what I did. I painted the little gears right here gold. I also did it in the back of the legs too. I, I always like to paint those back of the legs just to give it a lot more detail. So you can see right there. Right there, this is gold. And over here on the other side, gold right there. Yeah, so I did that as well. Of course, I also painted the rifle gold. Just ish, the rifle represents status in the military. That's why I like to do it with all my grazes as well. So, there, right there, right there, gold as well. Which came out really, really nice. This is all testers and now I'm all gold pretty much and then what I did was you know I guess um my main goal of this kit because when I unboxed it I also leave an uh, eye card somewhere on top where you can see my bamboo skirt it would say right there unboxing the 1144 high grade travel grace check out the unboxing video that's what I'll say but anyways I opened it I very I hated it guys um the reason why I say that is because I've built already how many grazes three Plus the weapon pack too for my Grace Kai custom. Yeah, guys, it got super tedious and super boring. I told myself, how can I make this guy pop? The way I made a pop was giving it color separation. I wanted to do the color separation. So what I did was I used Tester's Enamel Sky Blue. So as you can see right here, it came out very, very nice. And shout out to John, the guy holding up the camera. He gave me a 100% you got the color scheme, you got the color separation right. And thank you for the very supportive comments, John. Hopefully I get to see you. I didn't, um, I wasn't able to make it to the Gunpla meeting as I'd want to. But yeah, hopefully I get to see everyone that I saw at the contest. And if I didn't say hi to y'all at the contest, whoever y'all, whoever I didn't say to, I knew it was a few people I didn't because I had to go to the next event. I apologize, guys. I'll say hi to y'all, guaranteed, in the next Gundam. Uh, Knights and all that stuff. Whatever. Hobby Town, Otaku. I digress. Let's get back to this review. <laughs> so yeah, guys. What I did to paint all of these sky blue effects, especially on the legs. I really need to paint those legs. Golly, that was going to be so boring if I didn't. Especially on right here, right here. The th side thigh thrusters right there. A little bit on the little uh, cylinder things. Right there. Actually, one at the bottom that you really can't see well, but it's at the bottom of the thruster right here. I painted that as well. And, of course, the antenna on top. That looks really, really nice. That's a identification of just awesomeness, guys, pretty much. And also in the middle. I also mentioned the middle right here, which is going to be a plug plate. But, yeah, that was all hand-painted sky blue testers enamel. Very, very nice color. I tried the sky blue for Tamiya. It was very dark. It didn't really separate the colors. It was very close to this dark blue, which I I hated it. So yeah, I painted it using the sky blue, which did a lot more fantastic effect, the right effect that I wanted. I mean, to be honest, I would have gotten even a little lighter, but yeah, it was the lightest I could find. I still don't really know how to mix paints properly. Especially model paint, so yeah, I'll do experimenting on that later on. But I think it came out really, really well. Okay, what else did I do with painting? I did the weathering on, well, not the weathering, yeah, but I painted. Well, let's just go over this real quick since I already talked about the rifle. I did paint the axe and the little, um, I don't know what to call this thing, this little hook, grappling hook thing I'm jig. Yeah, this is actually not a tester's um, aluminum this was actually a tamiya chrome silver because i started experimenting hand painting and using tamiya acrylics and yeah i was like hmm interesting uh yeah it does from my experience since i've been dealing with enamels for so long 
it does um, drive pretty quickly, but I got the hang of it to just paint very fast pretty much. I maybe use a little bit of retarder and all this stuff. I'm starting to learn how to do all this stuff due to my new airbrushing skills, which I'll talk about later. But um, yeah, painted it chrome silver gave it a very, very bright color, especially on the Axis blade right there, which is a little wetter, but I used Tommy, uh, I mean, Tommy, uh, Tester's enamel to dry brush that really quickly. So right there and right there. So yeah, that's all gonna be chrome silver Tommy acrylic. I believe that's the, all the chrome silver that I used. Yeah, that should be it. So I did that. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I was gonna go over the thrusters. Yes, speaking of thrusters, I tried going for the burnt iron effect. So basically just weathered thrusters that they've been using all that stuff. The way I did it was, you, could, you can see a lot better for example right here on this shoulder. And this goes for all the thrusters around here. What I did was, I saw some pictures. Uh, I may have not gotten them right due to another picture that my buddy showed me. But yeah, so what I did was, I imagined the hottest part would be blue, which would be at the edge. So what I did was, I got, I got Tester's Arctic Blue. I gave it a little, like a little smudge of paint, I just brushed it on. After that, behind it, I use a Tester's Bronze. Because I, it just that's just the way I thought it looked, and then afterwards I just put uh, silver all over the place pretty much, and that's the effect I got. I also panel line behind the thrusters if they were applicable, not these side thrusters here, obviously. Also in the middle too. Well, not really in the middle, but I'll discuss this later. I didn't do that burnt iron effect on those, and it's all hand painted by the way. Once again, I'm just gonna keep on saying that. <laughs> you already know that. Anyways. Also on the thrusters, I painted them. Of course, you have to paint them black if they're used, right? And all the ash, the dust, burnt stuff in there. Yeah, you gotta definitely paint those black. Which was Tamiya, not Tamiya, Tester's flat black. Flat black. Yeah. Speaking of more flat black, this is flat black right here. This was originally just gonna be disgusting blue. It wouldn't look me mechanically right. And speaking of that, I lift up the shoulder right here. Something I didn't reveal in the contest too. There's a gold right there. I'm gonna go ahead and mess with him. There's a gold inside the shoulders. If you can see that in the light here. Uh, no, you can't see that. Right there. Yeah, it's covered. There you go. There's gold in the middle right there. Yeah. So just FYI, I guess. Yeah. And also, what was I going at? Oh yeah, kind of line them if they're ap applicable. This right here. Just hit the camera. Um. Sorry guys, there's a lot, I did a lot to this model, there's a lot to go over. That's it for the shoulders, the back thrusters, and the thigh thrusters right here. So what I did with these guys right here, I'll go on to the other interesting thrusters. These guys on the shoulders, you also see them in the back as well. Right here and right here. You also have under the back thruster right there that I used as well for the same burnt iron effect. But on the inside of the thighs, I thought those were thrusters, so I treated them as thrusters, just like so. Just painted that with inside the thighs. Just painted that with silver and painted it with flat black in the inside. And with these guys, I did the reverse wash effect. The way I used my reverse wash effect was I didn't use lighter fluid just because I have rules not to use lighter fluid in the house because I don't want the house to sit on fire, of course. But uh, what I did was I used um, testers black. And then, as it, dry, as it dried 24 hours, I top coat it with acrylic uh, flat or uh, clear coat. Tommy. And then what I did was I just got the enamel paint, painted the thrusters, and then I cleaned it. Actually, no, I messed it up. It's actually vice versa. Painted it first, testers aluminum, then top coated that, then painted it flat black, cleaned it up, revealed that pretty much. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, that's the way I, it went. Okay, what else did I forget? Anything more about painting, painting, painting? Not really, let's just go over weathering at the moment. And then I'll go over to the next part. Oh yeah, gold, more gold details. Uh, let's see. I painted the bottom of the feet gold as well because I just like to do that once again. So let me get him closer in there. This is the the only clear stand I had, so I had to use an action base too, I believe. Yeah, let's go at the bottom. Once again, just to for status of military ranking. And a little bit of white right there. It's a little bit darkened because of the pigments. Pigments, but yeah. That is Tamiya flat white right there. Or gloss white, actually. It's gloss white. 
That uh, doesn't really matter since it's flat coated. Okay, is there any other painting I forgot on the wall? I don't think so. It looks good so far. Okay, let's get on to the weathering because I really want to discuss the weathering. The weathering is very... I did a very interesting technique. I was thinking of dry brushing it, like I just said with the axe. I did dry brush that. What I did with the armor all over the place was I have two picks and I dip the paint in there and I, I let's say I got too much right I mean if you ever dip the pick inside the actual jar you will be like that's too much you scrape it on top of the jar what I did was I got that paint and I just scratched it on there well not necessarily scratch it I brushed it on there first and what I did was I just started scraping it as if like I'm erasing it with a pick and it gives me that very, very scratchy look that you see all over the model kit. Uh, let me go ahead and rotate it for you once again. Yeah, all the scratchiness, especially on the legs, the edge of the leg right there at the bottom, which I've been covered by the gun. Especially right here, you can see right there. Let me get a good example. The back of thrusters right here. The arm right here, you can definitely see right there, right there. All over the place, guys. If you look at pictures online, you can see all the scratch something that I did with this guy. And I want to call this technique, I'm not too sure if it's new or someone who came out with it. But I want to call it scrape painting. That's what I want to call it. I want to call it scrape painting. Where you get a toothpick, you dip it in the jar or the top of the cap of the jar. Then you don't scrape the excess unless it's obviously very too much. You apply it to the mall, for example, a gray's leg. I'll use my finger as an example. You would just put it on and then let's say it's all over the place, it's too much. You will get the pick on the side that has not been painted, so right here will be appropriate. And you just scrape it on pretty much like so. It'll give you a nice, very nice, um, scratchable look. Yeah, by all means though, it could get very messy. And if there is just too much paint, you mess up. You can always get enamel or any kind of thin or whatever paint you'll use for hand painting, for weathering, and you could just clean it up like so. And yeah, that's how I did most of the weathering. Now up to the four, or now up. Excuse me for my grammar, my incorrect grammar. For the pigments, I'm trying to stop this. It's a bit weird because this is a new stand. It's a taller stand for my camera. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, what I do with the pigments, I very, I started off with pigments on this model, so I can give you some, I guess, thorough information on how I did it properly. Oh yeah, I could. What I did was I bought from Hobby Lobby some soft chalk pigments. I used a dark. Black. Let me let me let me talk about the dark black first. So, as you can see right here, it does look burnt, right? That's because that's the black pigment. What I did was I got my little um, tray where I put paints, pigments, wave to airbrush in, and I got the brush. Just brush it on with a napkin, just to wipe off some excess, uh, excess, and then I just brush it on, just like dry brushing, pretty much. Very very simple. I did the effects, especially on those thrusters, because they've been used, of course, all over the thrusters, the back ones, the side ones are here, the inside of them as well, to give it a dust look. I especially like it, I'm not too sure if you can see it right there. Um, pick them up. Okay, so, I especially like it right here. I thought I did a very excellent job on the, above the, or I guess the new capture you call. Yeah, because the thrusters, the fire will be hitting it right there. And it reveals some burnt effects right there. You can also see it right there as well. Also on the inside of the thigh as well. It may be hard to see, but yeah, right there where I'm pointing it. Okay, did I forget anywhere else? I did a little bit on the inside of the thigh thrusters right here. There's a little, what I thought was hollowness. What I imagine was hollowness. And I imagine that's where exhaust would come out. And I just brushed it off. Brush it off on the edges right here because that's where the little thruster flames will be coming out. All over the thrusters, especially at the bottom right here. Definitely at the back of the skirts. That's definitely some pigments. Uh, all over here as well. Let's see. I also did it on the weapons too to give them some sort of a brush effect. I would have used the spray painting technique, but it was already too late. I ran out of time, so yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe I'll touch them up later on, but I think they look pretty good for just being... Uh, brush with the pigments because I don't want them to be too wetted. I want them to be like they're not too damaged. I mean, why would they have scrapes on the guns? It really doesn't make sense to me. So I just hopefully um, it's noticeable uh, dirt black effects pretty much. <coughs> Excuse me. Golly, this video is already 20 minutes. 
Sorry guys, it's just a lot of explaining. Okay, so what I did next was, around the armor, around the blue and the dark blue, I gave it asteroid dust, which is basically a dark a gray pigment. So I did that, brushed it all over the place, hopefully it's noticeable, it gives it a little dusty look. And then, especially on the feet, the feet, I didn't really like how it turned out. Maybe, I don't know what was going wrong with the, I used this, if you could see, let me pick it up once again. It's supposed to look like he landed on Mars because freaking um, Iron Blood Orphans is usually lo located on Mars, right? So I gave it this like dusty R R Mars sand effect. I hope it's noticeable. Doesn't look too noticeable in the right now. I guess it kind of does. I don't know. I guess I need to put like a crap tone of it and just brush it on there to give it another good effect. So yeah, it's a little disappointing. Maybe I'll touch it up later on, but I got more projects to do. So second place, this is how it was. Yeah, pretty much. And with that, let's go over plot plate and then modifications, and then we'll be done with this guy, guys. And decal stickers. I guess we can mention the decal stickers. Simple stuff. So, the decal stickers were a mixture of 1144RG, uh, Wing 0EW, and that's gonna be the one from the movie, not the other one. That's Verka. Yeah, so. I used those decals, I also used, oh yeah, I also used 1-100 uh, dual Gundam, dual, dual Gundam, I was getting mixed up with a blue duel, but yeah, so these triangles right here, these were from the blue duel, and the reason why I put the big one right here is because that's where his grappling hook thing was, it was just give him like, that's the weapon arm right there pretty much, yeah, so I used RG Wing Zero decals, sticker decals, these are all sticker decals, no water slide, no trans dry transfer. Then I used 1100 um, Dual Gundam decals, those stickers right there. And everywhere else, uh, you can see one right there on the leg, one right there. What else did I do? Very light stuff. Right there in the middle, it says caution in between the thighs right there. It's very hard to see. The reason why it's very hard to see is because those are such old decals, but I think they did the nice touch. Uh, let's see, and I think that's pretty much it. I didn't really do too much for the back. I think this was from the 1100. Um, wait, did I mention them, guys? Those were from the RX 782 Verka kit. Yeah, it's an old kit, so just FYI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So EW, all these were from EW, and there are one from actually the Dual Gundam. It's gonna be this red triangle if you can see it right there. Let me pick them up real quick. Red triangle right there. It's hard to see. Let me get that light. If you can see right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Where my stick is pointing. I'm not too sure if you can see it. I don't want to move the arm because I don't want to mess with the posing. But yeah. That's pretty much it. So those are all the sticker decals. Okay. What else? Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Plug plate. So. These little squares right here. I'll start off with these little dice. The dice. These little squares right here, two millimeters, cut them off like so, sand at them once they're applied with extra thin cement so it can melt on the plastic and not uh, come off when sanding them. And I got sanding sticks from Hobby Lobby, sanded them to appropriate shape, and that's how I did it. So these guys are here too, two millimeter, two millimeter. Uh, another one, I'm not too sure the size, I just moved the camera, I'm not too sure the size. These right here as well. Yep, I also had some in the back. Plug plate. Right there, and another one right there. If you can see the shadow, and um, another thing to point out too is that isn't all the plug plate, but another thing to point out with these guys there's like little line effects right here. And I tried painting those this sky blue color, it was not gonna happen. I sanded it down or cut them off and then sanded them down, and then I used these as an alternative. It gives you a lot better effect, a lot better popping effect. Okay, so the other plug plate was, I gave him some brackets on his bicep right here to make it look secure and mechanical, so I gave a bicep right there, painted it, that's going to be Tester's aluminum on the air arm as well, you can see that right there, and then what I did too was, got some right there at the bottom of the thighs, let me go ahead and lift them up once again, right there. Did it right there as well, and right there as well. Also, of course, another thing to mention about the weathering too is I panel lined this dark pieces. I panel lined 
with Gundam Marker Brown panel liner and the rest even including the sky blue one the black so yeah that's what I did with that am I forgetting anything else modifications real quick on the modifications all I did was to stop with the antenna cut off the safety nub made it look sharp just like so what I did with these rectangle like sh gray's nipples <laughs> cut them off made them look sharp gives a very menacing look looks a lot better doesn't look like a great then what I did next was gave these the same treatments basically they were just flat top just like so like that and cut it cut it in an angle gave it that sharp look also cut off the safety nubs on the the, the side uh, thrusters right there and finally is that it another add-on is I decided to add from weapon set 2 another gun I didn't want to use um, the Schwabble Gray's uh, Lance to me that would look too much like saying it's Gal Gal Galio piling him but no it's not so yeah it also gives him a more menacing look a more commander like look because usually commanders have a rifle and a pistol so yeah guys I think that's going to be it let me get this thing rolling once again so you can see it pretty much yeah, I believe that's going to be it. The camera's a little bit messed up. I'm just give me a second. Move this. Is that a good? Yeah, that looks good. All right, guys. So that's gonna be it for this uh, video, this exhibit slash explanation or double E. So, guys, by all means, if you have any questions, oh well, one thing I forgot. One more thing, guys. <laughs> the way I top coat it is with. I used Tamiya acrylic flat coats. I thinned it for airbrushing. I'm now using an Iwata airbrush Neo. An Iwata Neo airbrush works fantastic compared to the Cypher Vet um, 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 uh, Harbor Freight airbrush. But the compressor works very well, so I give kudos to the compressor. But yeah, guys, finally, that's going to be it. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I will get to them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this explanation and how to use the skills that I did, you know, I'll come up with tutorials. I definitely will do tutorials how to apply pigments, how to get the weather, the scraping technique, all that stuff. I'll do tutorials on that. Go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel if you do support me. If you do support me. If you want to support me. <laughs> and as it'll also help the channel grow and get more content and all that stuff. I'll be able to just move more videos if y'all keep on subscribing. And don't forget to check out the social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates on videos, projects, and product calls. Don't forget to check out eBay. eBay, I'll sell most of my old figures that I've taken well care of in the past to make some room for more figures and more supplies, all that stuff. So yeah, guys, if you really want to support me, I don't have a Patreon at the moment yet. I don't plan on making one for a while. But yeah, go ahead and check out my eBay account for the latest uh, toys on sale, all that stuff. Also, giveaway is coming out very soon. Be excited for that. If y'all want to know what the giveaway price is, if y'all haven't figured it out, just give me a sec to get it real quick. The wonderful I picked up at San Japan. And thank you to Rick Rick Otago Cafe for letting me purchase this kit. Yeah, pretty much. Guys, if y'all know what Rick Rick Otago Cafe is, they are a cool... Uh, anime slash uh, I want to say arcade Japanese arcade place located in San Antonio, San Antonio Texas on San Pedro Road go ahead and check them out guys they have a bunch of model kits and they'll be happy to order you whatever Japanese model kit or figure you want you just gotta let them know and um, yeah guys highly recommend them they have some delicious snacks over there Japanese snacks they have the melon bread right there too oh my god I could go for that right now I'm so hungry <laughs> also they usually show some pretty um, recent anime like the new Dragon Ball Super Series the latest episodes all that good stuff it is a good place fun games awesome people you can build your models there you can eat there awesome stuff guys highly recommend it but this is the kit that's gonna be for the giveaway it is the popular 1144 high grade at reach night this thing is gonna be awesome also does come with the Gunpla info uh, go to Tokyo Japan uh, campaign card which will have a serial number on it and basically I just did it this morning you type in that code first of all you sign up for a Bandai Namco account after that you do a survey about their products and then you type in the code and you get to put that code input that code into whatever price you want 
Um, just give me a sec real quick. Let me explain the campaign real quick. Even though I don't work for Gunner people, I'm gonna explain to you. Okay, guys. So sorry about the wait. So how this thing works is you have a choice of either inputting this serial number to the grand prize, which is gonna be a round trip airfare to Japan, or you'll go to Japan, or you could put for prize A. You'll get this 1144 high grade Gundam, which is polarized coating frame. Yeah, so you get that unicorn Gundam right there, followed by a tool set. Or you could get the limited petite guy plus Gundam market set, which is basically bronze, gold. It looks like I want to say silver. It says silver right there. <laughs> petite guy's limited edition, followed by the metal, those metal color Gundam market sets. Or you could get this new triple action base times five. So you get basically a bunch of bases and you could get this cool diorama of things right here pretty much that's that's an effect that's a thing you could come up with if you choose to get that so that's how the campaign works guys pretty much and here's gonna be the campaign period united states somewhere right here where the heck is the united states us here so it's going on from 8 7 all the way to january 29th 2018 so guys that's what this thing comes with as well and i'll come up with a separate video of the contest because i or giveaway it's not a contest it's a giveaway keep that in mind it's a giveaway because i still haven't finalized the rules i'm gonna finalize it very 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 soon sometime this week probably the weekend and yeah guys after <laughs> after all that explanation and all that advertisement by moi that is it i'll see you on the next video hopefully you enjoyed this guys sorry about the long length of video this is the longest video i've ever done See y'all guys, y'all take care.